Living the dream. That's it. I should share it on the regime. How are you going? I'm great. I'm good. I'm just trying to connect. Um, yeah, no, audience. look, I, I would I would suggest uh, it's not that important share it to worry about the liveness because mm. livi- living in the moment is what I'm all about. You probably want to be a little bit closer to that mic. Bring it in. Yeah. And also, I, 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 I probably like, want to close like the door to I the studio. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. This is... See, I'm, I'm mobile because I have a wireless mic. I'll so just be in the moment. Anyway, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, bro. This is uh, works it out. Um, I don't know. My name's really not Papa Fire. Let's be honest. Mm. It's uh, Dave Carter. I've known you AK- as many a name. AKA <laughs> DA Carter. That's right. But names names aren't really important because <laughs> I don't. I mean, Kegels isn't really your name. It's not. Yeah. It's let's. Not. Wow. Get into the, the You've bottom really of. Really put me on show at the beginning. Yeah. Of the, of just the thing. My name's actually Keegan. Yeah, well, people are going to learn that eventually if they're fans of yours. Mm. Um, so look, what this show is about mm. is uh, working out ideas and art and how it works in your life. All right. And so it's a pleasure to have you here, Kegels, because you're an absolute legend. And Thanks. we've known each other for quite some time now almost the whole time i've been an artist i would say yeah and so it's a pleasure to it's a pleasure to chat to you and i want to pick your brain about a couple Mm. of things you're a member of the regime the mighty regime that's right yes which is something like a 24-legged live (laughs) music beast (laughs) and uh you're also a member of the who knows crew who knows gang that's right and you're also a solo performer yeah and so i want to chat to you about each of those things um yeah. Any, any and all. And just also have a general yarn to you because you're mm. a champ. Oh, thanks. So welcome to the show. This is all recorded live yeah. in my home studio if you've it's lovely. never mm. um, tuned in before. Yeah, and so that's – so do we, let's, yeah. let's, start, yeah. let's start at the beginning, shall we? Yeah. Well, how, we did you get into, how did you get into um, rapping in general and writing? and Because and yeah. we met when you were a member of – uh, Lord Street Lord Collective, Street. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was like pretty early on into my artistic sort of career in Sydney. Mm-hmm. I was um, I was never really into writing. Uh, like I can kind of remember writing a poem here or there when I was a teenager, but it was really like, um, yeah, it was late teens just and then just early. get that mic a little oh bit yeah a little yeah. more just I'll a just little hold bit it. closer to you there I can yeah, just hold yeah, it. You, you yeah. Can do um that. the yeah late teens early 20s was when i started to write my own lyrics i was sort of acting first i was acting in theater shows from like 13 to 23 have you ever st- have you ever stopped acting let's be honest um <laughs> I, <laughs> well yes and no perform i've right? stopped acting on screen as characters because i prefer theater and my life's a theater piece at the moment so all the world's a stage yeah and all men and women merely players um yeah so it came i guess i i I just loved rap and i started to hear like a bit more rap that sounded more like me and then i i don't really know the exact moment i started freestyling at house parties but it happens for everybody and (laughs) um And yeah, it just sort of developed. I met um, some musos that were as into hip hop as I was and at the same like stage where like we'd listen and we were starting to dabble. And we did, we formed Lord Street Collective and I was just like, I was just an enthusiastic newbie with rap. So like I had never written a rap song and I started an open mic night called Crack and Eggs, which you, that's, I think we met through that or that's how you caught wind of Lord Street. But yeah, that like I just was hosting this open mic night um, and then eventually just started writing lyrics and it all sort of, in the years that I finished this acting course that I was doing, uh, I had started this band, Lord Street, and then by the time the acting course was done, I was just paying at lip service and just writing raps and r- like working on a solo thing as well. Yeah. Sweet. And then, so you've been, it was three years ago today in it fact it is actually the third anniversary of my very first solo project which was called kegel headed so like that that's three years since the gig that i released it but that's probably like that w- you know four years 
ago when that would have started to have been made or even like four and a half years ago some of those songs would have started to have been born in the um front room of lord street and so how does that f- how does how are you how are you feeling about how things mm. are progressing you're working on you're working yeah. on new stuff now right? well so that like was the first solo ep right so that's like a firstly it's just you're like i'm going to do this because i want to and it's it's not like for any other reason yeah for me that was like i there was no plan it was like i'm doing this and then i released it and got so much from it like so much juge so much like good positive feelings and like good mental health and just felt proud and like like uh, gratified creatively and that i went oh definitely want to do that again but that was just throwing like yeah shit at the wall finding what sticks finding what i like what i wanted to sound like i was really like i came into hip-hop as just like a jaded dick <laughs> like <Yeah. I> mean, <laughs> just immediately all the music i was listening to was like just like gritty like everybody's fake and you all suck but i'm so smart and sick and so like my <laughs> first five tracks i just like oh, i'm so dope everybody sucks <laughs> <laughs> I like I it's was, standard. yeah it's, it's fully a standard trope <laughs> um and that, that's so funny because you get like yeah, you brag and then you get over that and so the i'm working on a thing now i definitely feel like three years more developed as someone who uses words to express art i've been working on it the whole time and i feel like that's really evident if you were to like compare two verses and i'm not saying i'm like I'm just saying I'm, I noticed that I am better at it and that's probably important if it's something that you're dedicating a lot of time to. You want three years to be, like, significant. And I reckon it is just as far as, like, content ideas, you know, it's less just, like, listen to how loudly I can say I'm the best and now it's, like, I have a perspective. I want to try to give you that but, like, make you work for it through, like, some clever vague ambiguous thing that you know I, I i'm really enjoying the art behind songwriting at the moment um you know i was always performing like i was just <coughs> stage 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 but now i like i only want to perform if i've like built a new tune and it's like a cool song you know it's like impressive art to me not i don't really give a shit if any if someone tells me it's impressive if i'm impressed then i'll go and perform it instead of like just going and freestyling because I like want to just get off on like being like the center of attention. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because I think, you know, if you're passionate about performing, mm. you realize that there's like a huge ego element to even starting. Yeah. And so mm. I think that's something that you eventually kind of butt up against, the idea that you definitely need an ego to want to do it in the first place but mm. the more you can kill your ego in the process of doing yeah. it yeah well you need the ego to give yourself permission to exactly. to start and that's cr- like a crazy thing to do and so like that's uh, any like any artist of any medium i've just like massive respect because they like have done that initial yeah i'm going to give it a go thing because it's like imposter syndrome is the is so real i've been making hip-hop for five years in bands and in with producers and like i've i've ran crack and eggs for close to four years um and i still feel like completely like an imposter sometimes like i'll be like <laughs> oh i've got no right to be on this stage sort of thing um just because it's like just in your head because you you i guess there's like a separation you're like i love this art i'm separate from it but i want to make it so then you try to like bring yourself in to the fold uh but i guess you will i think personally i was in the fold long before i gave like accepted that i'd done enough work and was in the fold that that that, that, that is to say is like someone who is creating like regularly uh, a certain genre i'm not saying like a click or like a cool gang i mean like yeah. a, a productive or proactive artist like with mm. a with a like uh, not even a goal but just like yeah just a doer yeah you want to contribute yeah 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 to the m- yeah rap in this country is healthy right now man of course healthy yeah. yes i reckon it's c- like mo- it's across genres the the like the new like the 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 drill stuff is covered by like those one four boys and it's like the the hip-hop we've always had dope hip-hop coming out of this country but like the 
the v- fact that like we've got people on grime, trap, drill, and hip hop that are world class is like a mad thing. It makes me want to go. I want to throw my hat in that ring because everybody's really good at what they're doing right now. There's like I've got a perspective, um, I'm, and I just want to like throw it in. Uh, I've been doing this thing lately, just like throwing words at the internet because. Cause, <laughs> you yeah. know, just like write like a thing. If I'm in my room, like if we weren't doing this today, I'd just be at home, probably like smoking herbal cigarettes and trying to throw words at the internet. Just a one a week, 16 bars, not, something to not use. I think people go like throw away things, but just for like practice. But then also like content, because like I'm very like cynical <laughs> as a as a online content creator, but I do, I like to do it, but I don't like put any weight on it. And so I just do these re- like stupid ass videos because yeah, s- people want to <laughs> see it. There's an audience for like the weirdest shit. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if people will watch uh, other people eat food, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and so like turn it up, you know. <laughs> 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 they love it. Well, uh, I mean, then, and that gives you, it definitely gives you heart, particularly if you, I, I feel like, something you know as someone who makes stuff i'm soup i'm absolutely deeply deeply cynical about the entire technological structure mm. of the stuff you know the actual st- people behind the things that get put out yeah I love but then it feels like what was supposed to be a kind of like woodstock free-for-all where everybody had their own space and anyone could move anywhere mm. has become this like regimented shopping mall on the yeah. internet yeah where you're basically being charged for space mm. instead of it being a free and open space, which is what it mm. was originally envisaged as. And so yeah. I'm more cynical than than uh, than most about its shortcomings, but yeah. still I I agree with you 100. percent It's if as well, long as you can kind of let go of things like the numbers behind yeah. things. Oh. So you know the number. If I look at <laughs> you know the number of people who watch mm. these things live or on YouTube in general, it's like well. There's a lot of people who would look at those numbers and be like, "Oh God, what a what a total failure!" But really, it's, oh man, it's the, the, <laughs> it's the, only the, the proof is in the pudding. The only the doing only thing the thing is the th- what makes the thing worth it. Exactly. I think that like that's what there's a lot of people. Sorry, didn't just no, ju- no, no. dive right in. But there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people that um there there's like people that they they are obviously um, chasing some sort of clout. Um, nothing wrong with that. If you want to be notorious and fucking be notorious, like if you want people to know who you are, that's all well and good. Um, it's the motivation behind it that is uh, what you've got to be careful of, like you're saying with like people who make the apps or make the content, what's their like intention? Are they trying to sell you a product or are they trying to like entertain you or... Or they trying spread. to make you, make you into a product. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, it's too late. We're already products. Oh, definitely. Our data streams are worth heaps our, our eyeballs um, are. but we can we can add crazy chaotic weird dope shit into their mix just by n- like th- like little weird content things like i do instagram stories a lot and th- like they're ridiculous they're shit like they're <laughs> <laughs> like they're, they're, they're not they're nothing they're not like smart they're not necessarily profound they're not new ideas on, often it'll like me just trying to be a little bit funny or I'll finish work and there's like this bit of time between like when I finish work and I've when I've gone home to um have a big bottle of water and smoke a cigarette and like where I've got all that caffeine energy and I haven't like gotten to my space to chill and I just like onto the internet <laughs> and people <laughs> love it they respond to it I get it's like because I, 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 I play with it because it's funny as to me it's because because it, I'm sitting in my bedroom, right? And I'm just, I don't care. I'm just going to go on the thing. And then someone is scrolling through and they're like having a bad day or something. And then it gets them. And like, it's not, you know, maybe it was just for them or maybe, I don't know. It's really weird. This, co- this content thing, you can throw shit out there and it's going to mean so much to somebody. And that's cool. But you can't gas yourself up like you matter at all because of your stupid random thing. Because like it yeah. was their mm-hmm. meaning, not yours. Yeah, I agree. That's, I mean, it's it's funny because I I gotta admit total ignorance of your Instagram story shenanigans because I don't lo- I don't look at them. Yeah. Like as someone who tries to make shit themselves and 
practice mm. and between all the stuff. And so it, it's it's <coughs> again interesting that when you, I mean, I <coughs> I actually even abhor the word content mm. because because I feel like that uh, it's That's just what like I this. Used to call my art. W- it's just this kind of weird. Uh, amorphous word that mm. just like sucks in everything, and but so things that things aren't you know like a a, uh, a story you know mm. you, you make a video or a story or a poem or a a song and somehow it all becomes this like amorphous mass of just something to be consumed and yeah. not not looked at it on its own terms. But mm. I I understand also looking well, at that's it. That's the thing because like lots of the content you don't want it doesn't need to be looked at for its artistic merit but then occasionally some of the content is like an artistic piece but i'm sorry it is actually all content it's just yeah, like no, you're right i mean that's my the, objection that's to the, it doesn't that, matter yeah that's the group <laughs> that's the grouping that we've been given um i'm just i'm just contrarian by nature yeah. so i i will hear that word mm. and, and be like no it. this is a song yeah, this is right. song tent yeah Content, but yeah, no rebellion is. That's when you're selling lies. That's content. Yeah, yeah, yeah rebellions. Rebellions useless because there is no. There's that's that's one of the things that that gets me down. I guess about mm. this is that of oh, rebellion you, against like the stat quo of the net now. I guess so. Like yeah. the m- internet marketplace. Yeah, yeah. Of, there's no fixing it. <laughs> yeah, no. It's kind of because I. I mean, I w- I'm old enough that I remember the days of like making your own website using html which is something yeah. that i did because i was a massive nerd my brother did that yeah and so as someone who came from the kind of wild west of like you staked out your own little piece and, yeah and you could have your own website and and create your own reality in that way mm. it took a lot more effort and fewer people did it but yeah. it's effectively like instead we've been given this scaffolding and it's like you can mm. put all your shit in there it's super even easy. remember myspace you could pimp your myspace with html yeah, yeah, code yeah, 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 but totally. now you like yeah, of course. Now and in, in a lot of ways, I can see why <laughs> having looked at like how garish and shit a lot of MySpace ended so up looking good, just like. So good, just raining dollar signs and yeah, yeah. soldier boy. Like scrolling marquees. Yeah, and yeah, sort yeah. Of yeah. Nonsense. Cats just following your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. like I can I can see why people uh, gravitated to something that was like cleaner and less uh, yeah. horrific uh, in in the, the book faces of the world. Yeah. But... There, there was something glorious about that freedom and the, I guess what we all learned about the original internet is that uh, there's a limit to how, how free mm. you can be because a lot of people will abuse that freedom and make, pe- make stuff look terrible. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so like freedom within boundaries is a, a lot easier. Mm. Like if you just carve out, like so instead of uh, this entire flat expanse mm. of sp- real estate on the internet, where you can like go out into the desert and build yeah. your own shack and you could make it like a really weird um, mm. palace. Instead, you get like a canvas that's that's a yeah. square and it's going to move like in one particular direction yeah. and it's like one way that people can interact with it except you don't have to do anything. Mm. Um, and You just fill gonna, it with your information and your photos. Yeah, yeah. And people and are going to choose that every time because mm. if it looks better in context and it's easy to use, yeah. why would you go out into the desert and build a shack. Do you know what was really nice? Um, not that I'm on it anymore, but there was a time when Spotify and Tinder linked up and you could have a profile song and it reminded me of MySpace when sure. you used to have a profile song and it would just say so much about you and like your you could have you could, you could have one's autoplay. On, uh, no, yeah, you could. <laughs> if only you could do that on on Tinder. Oh, Ooh, man. Gee whiz. I just gave yeah, that a that little kiss. That would be hilarious mm. to like program some like death metal. Yeah. So Don't so rush <laughs> until you want to go on a day. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> You'd really separate yeah. the wheat from the chaff. Mm. Be like, mm. wow, this this lady is keen. Well, I was thinking like, how ballsy is it to just put your own music there? <laughs> like, oh yeah, did you like that tune? That's actually this little band I'm part of. Yeah, no, no, that's not me singing at all. No, <laughs> no, no, not playing guitar. No, no, those. Just the words right at the end, the eight words at the end. Yeah, that's yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nah. <laughs> nah. I don't. I'd um. I've actually written a song, uh, kind of about my experience with online dating. Not that I have much, but um. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Tinder definitely gets a mention. Uh, oh, why? Why would it not? I, I, rem- I mean, as someone who's n- no never been part of mm. that world, I find it fascinating. I remember mm. the the time when I. I didn't even know what it was, mm. what Tinder was. And then I was at 
a little house gathering. There were like four of us there and three of us were chatting and there was yeah. uh, one girl on the couch, like text, you know, just yeah. in her phone. Swipping. And I was kind of like, oh, like, what are you doing? You're playing a game or you're, te- you know, you're texting a lot. Um, and she said, oh, I'm on this thing called Tinder. I'm like, oh, what's that? Is that a game? And she's like, mm. kind mm. of. Yeah. And then, and then there was a knock at the door, like as I was talking to her. Oh my God. Like, this guy is from Tinder. And I was like, whoa. This is a dangerous game. <laughs> and so I like went to, the, I ran to the, I ran to the door and I, I like, like are you the from door. the internet? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was this like handsome dude. Mm. Like he was like, yeah, she'd done well. It yeah. was like this handsome Swedish guy. Oh, dude. And uh, I was like, hey dude, I, are you from the internet? And he's like, yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 was in a, I was in a relationship when it came out, I remember. Um, and apparently there was like just this kind of three to six month orgical heyday of Tinder where everyone was just on it like, this is crazy. What, you just want to come over now and we'll do it? Like, <laughs> but I miss, I miss that. I miss that exciting bit. Um, I just got it when it was like pretty much good for people who don't do social stuff. Because, like, you are way more, hey, no beef to Tinder, whatever, do what you want to do. But you, w- I find you're way more likely to find someone that you're going to, like, Actually like be into yeah. at a thing that you go to that you're already into. Not just, like, the algorithm's like, meh, you guys both like friends on Facebook. Um, yeah. I feel like the conversations about Tinder are, like, eight years old, though. Sure. Like, I, well, mean, I mean, uh, late. I mean, I mean, I mean, they're late. I'm sorry. I'm ma- I'm aging don't your podcast. Apo- don't apologize about. Uh, I just had stale to. I content. had to get. I had to get that <laughs> off my. I had to get that off my chest about Tinder. I missed its heyday. Well, I mean, but hey, you know, there's nothing. I f- I feel like the these things that come and go still leave their mark on oh, yeah. on our culture and on yeah. human relationships and and things like swiping mm. like people. That's in the lexicon a, now. It's yeah. A, yeah, that's right. Like swipe you can right. Just swi- you can. You can and and people, a good friend of mine, Alice Fraser, uh, who's mm. a comedian, hilarious comedian, um, you know, like talks about wanting to do it in real life, mm. like just like swipe yeah, people yeah, away out yeah. of your life forever. Yeah, it's sort of mid-conversation, you're like, yeah. oh, that was pretty anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but it's, it's, Tinder is particularly evocative, I think, of like cultural trends in the Id- in the way that you can engineer these things that we carry around to facilitate social interactions that have that we're not engineered for. Mm. Like our evolution socially has been sped up so much, yeah. so much. And so when something comes along like that, where it's like, there's no precedent for this. Yeah. Uh, it's like a cheating machine mm. or like a, a hookup machine. Fully. And that's why it's so compelling because. And it was f- like, it was like a hookup machine at the height of uh, hookup culture. You know, after all these shows like um, Jersey and Geordie and like every song is just about fucking fingering people on Molly in the club. <laughs> and like there's just this <laughs> Tinder box, pun intended, uh, of sexual frustration and like party in the club, candy shop energy. Yeah, And everyone was spot. just like, whoa, all right, let's, th- yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. And then the novelty wore off, and we're like, "Man, I, I, if I'm going to sleep with strangers, it'll be strangers from my social circles." Thank you very much. Yeah, mm. but and I don't know though because I've no, I've no, like I'm sh- I, I'm no people like are happily married often and stuff. So I just p- can sit here and be cynical and like. Well, yeah, I, I whatever. I uh, as <laughs> as as someone who was happily married the entire mm. time mm. Uh, that of like tinder's rise and well i don't know i don't know has it fallen yeah. i don't know maybe i don't know it's, probably, it's probably still a thing i dip in sometimes sure. i have to create a whole new profile and it just like that just makes you want to stop <laughs> yeah, immediately like all right six pictures and then i have to say what like there's like a you gotta yeah yeah because anyone who doesn't have a bio i'm like i know this is a shallow game but you gotta at least like you play write something, yeah because yeah. if, if you don't and I had to then, like, that's not fair. So if th- someone doesn't have a bio, that's an instant no. I'd, sorry, ladies, I'm not actually on Tinder anymore. Um, just in case. There was, like, one or two watching and wondering. I've lost my train of thought now. That's all right. Damn it. Just going to end sounding really arrogant. That's f- the, the, there's, there's no end to this. That's the beauty. That's good. So, um, we so yeah. But we're, I, I suppose the, the reason that this whole conversation about the development of mm. uh, 
Tinder and those kinds of technologies is because we were chatting about, and we're both deeply cynical about the internet oh, and yeah, creating, and content, things, yeah, content, creating yeah. things that get put on the internet. Mm. And, and I, I suppose the but reason... realising you have to. Well, yeah, I suppo- yeah absolutely. It's you the, have it's, to. It's where, it's where people are. Unless you're willing to just like make your music for yourself and like literally you don't if you like if you're truly you don't want anyone out there because i'll say that i'll like i'll say like i don't care if you hear it or not but i'm going to actively release it like i want people to hear it maybe they like it or whatever like i want it out there in the ether but really the only way to do that would be say be a busker yeah that doesn't even have an instagram so like people see you and go like wow or they see you at a gig and then they come up and they say Mm. oh cool like and then the only answer is, okay, like I have CDs for sale. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, but yeah. do, can I... My car do doesn't have that anymore. Do you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's like, but do you, can I follow... Can I? Yeah. It's like, how am I going to hear about your next gig? It's exactly. like, well, you're not. Um, yeah. I'm going to stand here and... and yeah, <laughs> and if that's how you want to play it, that's really cool. That's like zen. Yeah, because if you're, if you're committed to truly not using the internet, not even mm. email, I think yeah. email is probably like the, the closest equivalent to yeah. uh, snail mail that we yeah. have now. Word. And yeah. The, I mean, just the idea of someone saying, hey, that's you can't find out, but I have an email list. It'd be yeah. like hilarious. It'd yeah. be so novel. It'd be like finding yeah. someone from the 20s and be like, hey, Fully. ladies, let's get, you know, like, mm. ah, no sex before marriage. And mm. like, <laughs> Are you showing yeah, your ankles? So that's the thing. So like being people that weren't brought up with the internet in our face the entire time. Yeah. I think I was saying to you earlier, I got um, Facebook when I was like, I think 15. And I've had it for like 12, 13 years. And yeah, I got, it, I got it when I was 19, um, which is about the same length of time. Mm. Um, oh, damn, what was I going to say? Yeah. You, what, you, were you get, what were we on? You didn't, you didn't yeah. grow up with... Yeah, yeah, I didn't grow up with it. Oh, yeah, so like then like Instagram comes along and I only, I've only had that for like four or something years and that is just the most obvious one to me. That's just like um, a vanity mirage and like you just put yourself that is just like instant gratification it's just throw up the picture get the the clicks the comment and the stories is this other thing people can like react and it feels really communicative it's so self-indulgent it's really vain and like if you and and it's sick instagram is probably my favorite of the social medias i tried twitter Eh, everyone's just a genius on twitter that's like the melbourne of social media (laughs) Um, <laughs> that I just mean the attitude some people no, no, have no. about it because yeah, I fucking yeah. love Melbourne and everyone in it as well. But there's, you know, this, this attitude, there's like, I can of say course. that because it's like, even people in Brisbane are like, oh yeah, Melbourne's just so fantastically divine or whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, which it is, it totally is. But, um, people, there's some people that move there and they think it make that, ma- it makes them super cool. That's all I'm saying. Twitter's like the one that people think makes them cool. And so I, I I'm just not on it at all. Fuck yes. Um, <laughs> Facebook, I don't have the app. I just use it to go, like, to keep up with the regime. Uh, we have, like, a band page that we're all part of. It's got our dates. And then Facebook Messenger, I do have. And then Instagram's the only one on the phone. And then it's just because I am vain and I like the attention. But I don't, there's no weight on it. Like, you but could you've, actually... you've done very, I think you've done very well considering you're now brand mm. ambassadoring and so on. It's well, like yeah. A, it's a great... It's so crazy. Tell, talk, talk, talk us through that. How did you How did um, you go from Kegel's MC, just um, ordinary roustabout, to, yeah, to repping, what? repping <laughs> brands right. real hard? Um, talk us through well, that mental process. That There was two things there that happened. Uh, so there's one brand, shout out to Sleazy Thieves. A friend of mine and her partner started that. And that's gender neutral streetwear. And um, they wanted people who are like performers or skaters or writers or anything who would be keen to rep their brand. And I was like, absolutely happy to help. Um, great idea, I thought. And really, like, Paz, my mate, I've known her for many years and like, I, I was stoked to be asked, stoked to help out. The other thing I've been repping heaps is this brand called Ultimunted, which is a Sydney brand. And I just thought they were fucking sick. Like I saw the the clothes and was like, that is fresh. And I was like, I'm going to know these dudes. And so I just hit them up. I just started, like I used Instagram. That's other, you could just talk to celebrities on Instagram and they would answer you, dude. It's funny, yeah. It's like, I I got like... I don't know, not like, you know, a list or whatever who gives a shit, but like you can reach out to people on it and they often 
I mean, it's e you know easy easy in the city that you're in. But anyway, so I just started being cheeky and like reaching out and being like, I'm gonna buy that and wear that and do that because it's fresh. And then, yeah, I'm not even a. I just rep them because they're what Sydney looks like at the moment. It's sick. Like that's a Sydney clothing brand that looks cool as. I want to like be a s rapper from Sydney who sounds cool as or like being a funk band that's dope from Sydney. I want to know what the city looks like. You know, what's it smell like? What's it sound like? What's yeah. it, you know, where's the fashion? I want to meet the people that are making the current art in their medium. Like I'm making my little perspective rap shit and I'm doing funky love stuff with the regime uh what are you doing and that's what they're doing with threads and i fuck with it and so i just made them my friends hey boys <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's it's a great that's a great story i feel like you know be remaining cynical about the intentions of the people who have who have made this tech yeah. but then using it for your own purposes anyway yeah. it feels about as rebellious as as as, yeah. it's worth, as it's worth being yeah well it's, I mean, either, like it's either that or not be on it at all that's it if you're gonna if you really want to rebel turn it off but obviously that's not the option anyone's going to go for so just well, i mean it's good if you're like if you want to go walden style like go yeah. cabin in the woods yeah type not at all no i mean but yeah if that's <laughs> it's if that's, great if that's, yeah, if yeah. that's what you're for yeah then go totally. for it but i feel like if you want to be uh part of a conversation and mm. and you know part of you know if you want to be in the mix well, also artistically and because the mix is so thick now too you can just be like it actually takes so much pressure off like if i i care about songs i release that's why you know i want to really believe in it feel like it's finished da, da, da. instagram shit do not give a fuck like yeah. it, it's nothing it's really like it is i mean and we're so it's so quick for us to like actually get caught up and for our, it to impact our emotions and stuff. And of course that'll happen. Like if you let anything get away from you, whether that's like if people are fans of your art or um, followers on a platform or anything, and then it becomes like what defines you and then you get an ego trip off that. Yeah. Um, but if you go in like going no matter what, whether this c content or like stupid video is received by one or a million, it completely doesn't matter because it's it only lasts for 24 hours up on their thing anyway. Um, I mean, it's obviously on the net forever. <laughs> but if you like re like realise that it doesn't matter, then you can just, it's just, just this weird digital realm and you can just like throw weird little earworms in there uh, and just see. Like, and, and when you have like people following you, you just never know what it's going to do for someone. I was like being like a fucking sanctimonious prick the other day because I love those. But, you know, there's like for every person on Instagram, there's like six gurus, you know, like there's gurus all over Instagram. There's motherfuckers tell you to eat celery every day. There's motherfuckers tell you to only eat red meat. There's people who are putting crystals in their pussies and it's all perfectly dope. I think it's sick. <laughs> but and they they have their time. Like I, I, like I, I, I think it's um, like... Instagram's amazing because, like, even, like, really niche shit has got, like, this passionate following and, like, you know, people like bow hunting experts or, you know, pretty much every guest, like, that, like, a Joe Rogan type has, they have, like, there's, like, sanctimonious versions of everything on Instagram. So, there's <laughs> just stories of people, like, yeah, and because I've been eating the 17 carrots a day, that's why my skin is so shiny, okay? You've really got to try it. Like, And they're just, like, they're using the selfie thing to be self-righteous and sanctimonious, and it's, it's the best. So, I, like, do false sanctimony, and I'll be like, look, if you're feeling really bad today, j I did this the other day, feeling super depressed today, just make sure you draw a stick figure spud driving a skateboard into the forest. It's a mathematical antidepressant. <laughs> and I, and two people sent me the picture, and it worked for them. <laughs> yeah, so, see what I mean? Yeah, dude. That, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't even close to depressed, yeah. but now I feel so much better that i feel like i was mm. that's hilarious and well yeah that, i feel like that's the that thing where uh m your thoughts the way you react to things tra can easily transform circumstances mm. like that's the kind of magic woo that it mm. often gets peddled this feels this feels sanctimonious yeah good. but i love it <laughs> like good. i will be sanctimonious on your podcast yeah yeah please um like i know the 
like I know the weight that my opinion holds. I truly know the worth of it. Sure. And I hope you guys do as well. Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> but that's actually, you know, having a having a low, you know, being humility, right? Mm. Is a rare trait in the in the digital era. Mm. And particularly having humility while behaving like you braggadociously. Don't. Yeah. 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 Is, is even cuz the 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 completely IDGAF that sells. IGAF, I don't give a fuck or whatever. Yeah, That's what sells the personalities online. Oh, yeah, those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, everybody, the, the thing that um, Instagram and all of the platforms have done is mm. connect us so intimately that putting a word wrong can mm. instantly um, come back with a torrent of like, oh, you've taken the mm. wrong position, which is why, I mean, I, I've almost entirely abstained mm. from posting my thoughts mm. except in this format yeah i like this format because the reason i love this is because firstly i i can't be interrupted except by the person who's right opposite me yeah yeah no one's gonna just go Bloop. yeah that's mm. right and and if anyone wants to have an opinion about what i have to say on this thing they have to have listened yeah to a significant chunk of it mm. uh, in which case you're probably the kind of person who is willing to tolerate a, a we lot. We could probably of have a great conversation. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, I mean, and the, the the level of tolerance. If if what you find us discussing is so mm. abhorrent, you're way more likely to just switch it off and go somewhere else. Yeah. Than unleash a torrent because you can't absorb this so quickly that you mm. can formulate a response that's acerbic and witty yeah. and going to show how woke you are and score points. Yeah, bec and you don't public. have their last comment sitting there for you to. Totally deconstruct. Yeah, that's right. You have argument, to you have yeah. to read you have to read things. Mm. You have to listen, decode it, and then form an opinion. Yeah. And what you're far more likely to do is either a just listen and then yeah. say, "Well, I like that. I didn't like that." Or they're idiots. Or that's insightful. One of the constellation of thoughts that anyone's allowed to have about anything. Mm. Or just be like, "Well, that's not my cup of tea." And this is why I love podcasting and mm. and putting up videos of freeform conversations because there is no um, there's no rejoinder that mm. you can have with the deluded masses who mm. want to have arguments about uh, and, and yeah about getting sanctimonious because it's yeah. so it's so easy to get sanctimonious and yeah. the the easier it is to absorb the initial uh, piece of information mm. and then decide that you disagree with it and so on yeah which is why one of my least favorite things on so, you know the internet are, are people telling stories about something that happened to them and how they disagree with the mm. person that they saw or whatever it's like <laughs> yeah right who cares yeah. it's like you're just it's like there's this <laughs> do you mean like the, the like i bought a ticket and now i i'm i'm upset by the content <laughs> yeah well or, sorry or there's just, that word or just um the show offended me yeah well or not not even a show no, where yeah. where people will talk about what or other even just are even just like an experience at a cafe yes exactly yeah, like yeah, yelp yeah. yelpers yes yes that's right but i mean yelpers for like Yes, but yeah, other yeah. people's Yelpers social for their for, for their, other people's for their, social beliefs. Yeah, it's like when you you see a post that starts. I can't believe that people think that X, oh, yeah, and yeah. then like argue against this mythical thing. It's yeah. like I didn't, I didn't see <laughs> the original mm. thing, and that's not part of my world. But yeah, oh, so I've just destroyed you. No, that's cool. Um, good. So anyway, look, yeah, sanctimony is good, and this is like the sanctimony is called. I love it, man. Of. Uh, uh, what's what's good is that you will have to listen to a lot of chat about mm. Tinder before you get to our proper sanctimony. I enjoy that. Yeah. Now, we've chatted a lot about uh, what's wrong with current culture and so on. Yeah. And how to and how to engineer a response to it. Now, I think that's a decent way to segue into uh, who knows in the regime because uh, I want to talk about All these right. acts uh, with so. you that are into in, my mind's like cures for what ails people which is why you cats are so in both departments mm. like making such waves because mm. i feel like what you are embodying in these two different outfits is that don't give a fuck type of um, mm. attitude that is refreshing which is ironically like why it works on the you know people mm. are swarming behind you on the internet yeah and, and in person because I think that kind of energy is rare. I want to talk. I, I, I want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so telling you what I think about your stuff. I love stuff. it. I'm keen to hear <laughs> it. Um, I like to say uh, to people, I go, like, I'm the 24th member of two supergroups. Because <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm really blessed. I, around the same time that 
we started writing songs for the regime. I started making trips to the Blue Mountains to make like solo hip hop stuff with Who Knows, which is like a banner head for all the solo stuff that we put out. There's like 12, 14 of us, uh, a few beat makers, lots of MCs, shot to the boys. <laughs> um, and yeah, mainly based up in Katoomba. And that's, um, that's just hip hop, not trying to reinvent the wheel, just like make good quality rap. You know, we all just dig it. It's good. Yeah. Um, and there's there's your your stock standard fuck off attitude attached to all of that. Just you like the like this is for us. Listen if you want. Rad, have a nice day, sort of thing. Um, which is I think pretty uh, true of a, like most art, but it's like very like it's like it's really like said in rap. Like we don't you give a it, shit you if you don't like. You yeah. yeah. Uh, where the regime, like we're actually sort of our irreverence i think is purposeful yeah mm. in the sense that we are um my i think i said this in an interview recently so i'll say it again uh, but like we're either and this is gonna like let's talk about sanctimony for a second <laughs> Oh my God, we're either going to um, be the soundtrack to the apocalypse and we'll make that bitch funky as hell, um, or we're somehow going to switch some transcendental love switch through funky, funky disco and like effeminate dudes and true unconditional love between s audience and performer that maybe shit changes, or neither and we play heaps of mad gigs till, I don't know, one of us dies or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are yeah. Those, those are those that's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> yeah, they're three. They're three very real. Yeah, getting getting like death or close to death is uh, what the kind of thing that can derail a uh, a funky project. That's true. That's very um, true. Um, but yeah, we 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 like we feel we're empowered by that band. All of us in it. I mean. It became a thing like outside of us at some stage. I don't know when it happened, but now like we serve it. You know, we're all like, yes, that's the regime. We're all part of it. We serve this thing and we want it to go as far as humanly possible because it's having a nice impact on people. People get happy off it. Like yeah. they, um, like real happy off it. They, there's such a difference between when someone's like, hey bro, great show. And you know they mean it. You wouldn't really say it if you didn't. I wouldn't. But when someone comes up and they grab you and they like look you in the eye and they go like that, just like, like you know, it hit them. Um, that yeah, we we started noticing that early with the regime and that's fucking crazy. Like really seeing that like what you're doing is touching people. Yeah. Like they're like really getting into their fucking bones. Um, and so that's like that gets us all heaps motivated and it makes us feel real powerful uh in not in like a we have the power but like we're like that we can actually have like a good impact and like it can be you can you know say is a wooey or hippie or whatever as you want but like this i mean i've done like I, i've had like that young male confidence in atheism and i'm done with that um uh this is like my way of connecting with the transcendental i guess yeah because we all sort of come together and then it creates this other thing and it's like a palpable exchange with yep. a crowd and like yeah it's i it's i look at it through the lens of magic um because it makes it all feel more interesting sure. but you can look at it at the uh, on any level as just entertainment um, but they're just yeah. they're just words. It's just a semantic yeah. game. You can yeah. talk, you can talk about it in the using the language of mm. intention, or you yeah. can talk yeah. about it using the language of um, yeah. You can yeah, use scientific language. You can use magical language. You can use like religious or psychological or, or psychedelic language. Um, yeah. And I at the moment am enjoying the magical lens, well, um, just because it's <laughs> sort of you can like say. Uh, I can't really think of an example, but you can make like a sentence just sound so mystical, even if you're just talking about getting an Uber. Oh, of course. I'm going to summon a magic carpet sort of thing. I totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally jacked that off no, 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 a no, no, podcast no. that I listened to, though. That's um, fine. Shout. 
<laughs> Do you, to just um, borrow like an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make that clear that I just that's stole okay. that. But I yeah, mean, that that's the lens as well. Like that, like I stole the lens too, <laughs> to look through like at the world in more of a magical way. It, um, it, it feels like though what you're describing is like discovering, um, you know, music as a service. Yes. And that's that and was a huge trend. An artist, like being an Ar- artist. as an art as like, a service. Well, as, actually, realizing like yeah. not just rapper, sure. like artist, theme expressor, yeah. idea generator, sharer. Like what my purpose? I can yeah. use the art now for yeah. a reason. Yeah, it's a. I think that's an important realization slash transformation. I know mm. for me, um, the the transition when I went to Burning Man and discovered the like musical restaurant stuff that I do. Mm. And I was like, fuck, this is a beautiful way to transform something that I enjoy doing. And, you know, yeah. again, I have the performance ego of like, yeah, you know, like I like, I like being under the lights and mm. have being amplified and it's, it feels awesome. Yeah. But then really feeling like you can serve people and you, f- and you found a way to do it mm. is so important because otherwise it just can feel like you're serving yourself and yeah. that sucks. Yeah. Well, because, yeah. Because I when you, that, that feels like masturbatory mm. as opposed to like making sweet love. Yeah. Where it's yeah. mutually pleasurable. Yeah. And, and like, you, you know what? We all masturbate before we make sweet love. Yeah, that's right. You but need then, to practice. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then you go like, yeah, there's, that's a, the other thing is like, I don't really have a lot of expectations on the future. I'm sort of, it's taken me this long to realise what I know I, at the moment, what I know I will be working toward just ongoingly, which will just be creative projects because of what it does for my existence, like my mental health, my self-worth, all of these things. Um, getting able to actually like create and be in that creative space all of these things come with um uh just consistently working on something that i love anyway so it's like i like it's kind of comfortable to be like all right if 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 shit plateaued right now i got like a decent room i'm like a single dude decent room really amazing job plenty of time for my band plenty of time for my music i could just keep creating and that would be enough yeah and so that's not to say that i would like i want to travel the world with the regime i want to throw funk at the psychos dude it's good regime good come watch us um but if if i don't if i don't go throw funk at the psychos i'm cool with that too i just i I like i just want to write myself poems and show people the ones i think are good enough well you also got to get out of the you got to get out of your. You got to get out of the way of other people not being able to connect with the thing you want to do. Yeah. And I think that's and that's one of the ways to look at the whole like internet thing mm. is you can look at it as, as some way you can shove shit down people's throats, or yeah. you can see it as a way where okay, I, we need to be present here so people can connect to us because it's mm. the easiest way. Yeah, and that's where every artist who's ever been successful has done. Yeah, that's like, what it is now. <coughs> well, because back in the day when. When, and in a lot of ways, blessings that we're not in these times. Mm. But I mean, I trawl through my records and every single one of those artists mm. had to convince some record executive yeah. to give them money to yeah. go into a to press immaculate it. studio mm. and then press it on wax. And shit art still got made yeah. all the hard, time. Hard, yeah. And so The like hip hop grab of the early 90s, dude. Like yeah. so much oh, trash and CD. People like to talk about the you know like golden era of funk and mm. i defy you to actually listen through like a top 20 of any random day in the 70s and yeah. tell me that it's it's all good yeah. it's not it's <laughs> some of it is horrific there's a guy i mean i i don't uh, suggest you actually do this mm. but uh if you do really want to witness the suffering of how bad the 70s could you're be you're into masochism yeah there's a there's an artist an australian artist who had the temerity to call himself william shakespeare so this dude was in the 70s he wore a jacobean ruff on stage i know i shit you not and he had uh, a song called she's my angel it went number one 
It is one of the most atrocious pieces of music. I've it went heard. number one. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe you, Jack Shakespeare's name, bro. I really like Shakespeare. Yeah. I think that's like <laughs> totally unacceptable. Any yeah, artist, no. I don't care if you were born William Shakespeare. <laughs> if you're an artist, change your fucking name. Yeah. So, what? Well, sorry. Um, I would love to hear it after this. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I don't. I actually am not going to put a link to it. No, anywhere, no, don't. But I will. I'll play if it for you. If it's, it is, it's, if it's that bad. You but can anyway, I mean. Out. So we're not in those times anymore. No. Merci- Thank goodness. Mercifully. But the, mm. those times where of great technology where you can record music in your own space, which mm. I do right fucking here. Word. And it's amazing, the freedom that that gives you. Uh, and instead of having to have huge amounts of overheads and therefore be beholden to record companies mm. and so on, now it's like the, the, the freedom that comes with that is the responsibility that you now have to kind of push out your yeah. own shit. Yeah, and, and like part of that is part of the culture of technology has mm. also grown up around distributing shit in the social medias of this world. Yeah. And the, the, the thing, though, is that it's clearly not a strict meritocracy, but if you can be present and enough mm. people in the physical world actually want to find you, it's, there's yeah. no barriers. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, that's really, I suppose, what it's about is... Answer, like answering the call, mm. be, trying to be of service to people in the real world, and if and if people resonate with it, yeah, like getting out of your own way and allowing yeah. the shit to breathe. That's brief. that's the thing. Like you can because you have access to the majority of the people on the planet now, like they're like online. Um, you yeah, it's like you you just just put it out because someone will like it. Um, is that is, I'm talking about the Instagram stories. I'm not talking about songs. I'm not yeah. just saying like write it in. Man. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also Mate, work, th- on, that, work that, on your that, work that on your too if you want. That this throwing words of the internet thing. I've only done one of them, or maybe two of them on Instagram. Um, that's just like stuff I write on the day, or like a I'll show you like a song that's about to come out, and because it's like gives people something interesting to look at. I, I I don't think you should just throw them away. But the little jokes and the little like the I can't call it anything other than content. Mini vids, vines, or whatever. That's like what I'm constantly <laughs> call it content. Yeah, don't don't on um on Instagram. Like it, it's w- completely surprising to me that that has an impact on anyone. And it's like I have like a thousand followers. I'm not a Instagram dude at all. Uh, but um, even minor, minor, minor. I have strangers hit me up and I'm like, oh, you were just so happy in your thing. And I'm like, Matt. That feels and, good. and it does feel good. Yeah. Yeah. To, th- to, protect, to be like, oh, I could take it or leave it. Like, no, that feels mad. Every single time it feels mad. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. I'm glad you like it because I just am <laughs> I think it's funny as too. That's like when people say like, that was fun after a regime go show. I'm like, yeah, no, no. Like, same. I had fun <laughs> too. That was fun, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, finding finding that bit where you um oh where yeah. you move people it's 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 what it's about. Mm. I remember the first time because my thing w- when I would walk around with the looper and and yeah. do stuff the the reaction that I would often get from people would be like oh cool mm. wow and then one year at Burning Man I just walked around with my guitar and suddenly I was just playing songs mm. and instead of people being distracted by like beats and loops and stuff it was like people listening to words and, yeah. and music. And I started to make people cry. Yeah. And that shit is hectic. Mm. When you make it, I've, I've made, I, and it's starting to happen with more regularity mm. um, because the songs that I'm singing now are about a newborn baby and mm. like endless love and losing the, <laughs> losing the, the problems that I had with writing about that for mm. the longest time. Yeah. I had this attitude that, oh man, like it's like almost arrogant or it's bragging or something like that. Mm. If I'm singing about this, that like you're so stoked, the, yeah. this boundless love that I have, because mm. it feels like an ab- absurd pinnacle of privilege. It's mm. like, I'm mm. so well fucking said. lucky to have yeah. um, this love in my life. Yeah, but it would be like worse to not acknowledge that you are aware of your luck or that's blessings. Right. Yeah. yeah and and but and so since i tr- since i lost all that stuff and started writing because before i used to bury all all my love for annie and like yeah. layers of metaphors and abstract shit <laughs> and now i'll just 
I'll just write something that's like, I love you longer than forever past the borders of my heart. Mm. I love you dirtier than money and brighter than the countless stars. And when I get to the end of it, if so I've written that, for, if I've sung that to someone, mm. and particularly when it's one-on-one, so, you know, like... Yeah, sometimes someone has their person that they think of and it just like... Yeah, and you can get, <laughs> and like, mm. you know, get uh. having that, you know, re- and then you realise... Mm. All of this time that I've spent answering the muse, like yeah. sitting down, because a lot of the time, and I don't know how you feel about it, but when I sit down to write uh, or something comes to me, in a lot of ways, I don't feel like it's me. Mm. Oh, fucking nah, dude. I, the, yeah. Like the best lines, I laugh. I, it's like I've told myself a joke. That's impossible because it's an element of surprise. That's yeah. what makes funny. Yeah. And I go like, I have the line. And then the line will go, and I'll go, oh my, like I'll be like <laughs> laughing. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I'll read it and I'll be like, or like if I'm with Hammy or one of the boys, I'll be like, dude, yeah, it, I go, what the fuck? I can't believe that I just did that. And so it's like, yeah. well, it's and the that's download or whatever, which yeah, is well, a, that's which when is you're a buzzword. Connect, you're, you're, you're effectively, you're being present for the, for the yeah, news. For and, the the news yeah. and if I can recommend a, be- an, a piece of culture that's not horrific, um, there's a book by Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art. Okay. Which I think anyone who writes, particularly writes, mm. but does any form of art should read. Nice. And it's I about will. overcoming um, resistance. I'll audio it, book it. It's, it's, it's really good, but just wanted to connect back to what you said earlier, which is like, you, you know, music is like a spiritual practice. Like you're yeah. connecting with the transcendent. That's very much how I feel about it. I feel and like developing as well, like the, on, yeah. the, on the spiritual practice. Having a thing you try to develop regularly, yep. and that, and you see that's the thing is that I don't, I don't feel like it's me, but the longer I dedicate to it, the more that happens. Yeah, and yeah, that's the, the more bit open that I'll you take, are. That's the bit that I'll take credit for. Like mm. I'll take credit for the fact that I've, you know, written songs for fifteen years. Yeah, and so they get better because yeah. I remember the first songs that I write, I wrote were just like mm. mimicry and and. Oh mimicry, my god! Awful, yeah. mi- awful mimicry. Yeah, and then you kind of finally get to the stage where you're yeah. proud of what you're making, and then yeah, you stand dude. on your oh own two feet. Oh my god! I'm fully. I feel that at the moment uh, with this project I'm about to put out. Yeah, uh, tell, like, so tell uh, me about. So tell I've me about got the next uh, thing that you're putting out. Um, it's called. It's just a solo EP. It's six tracks. Uh, five of the tracks are produced by Crops, uh, in Katoomba. And the sixth track is produced by Carlos Jackal, both part of Who Knows. And it's got three solo tracks, three features. And it's essentially just like, just a self-indulgent reflection on the year, really. I've been writing it all year. And um, it's like, there's, I, I back Kegelheaded as like <laughs> a first, as like a first release, but it is like gritty and just like, fuck you, rap, rap, rap. And this is like, I feel like comfortable in my, perspective i feel like comfortable that it's uniquely my voice uh my delivery and yeah and my perspective and and it and it sounds like concise like it's finished you know i, I only really got to hear it like on a friday when we're doing the mix down but it's like i was like fuck some of these are, well all of them are pr- like they're full songs you know they're like yeah which is might sound weird to hear but when you listen to something you've written and it actually sounds like a a song instead of just like a track you made, it sounds like a song that could exist outside of you making it. That's a fucking cool feeling. And I've, I've got that with like all these bitches. It's exciting. Man. It's very exciting. And the one of the best things I think about doing a release, which is something that I'm gearing up for as well. Mm. And um, just on your own back as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. It feels, it's just, you realise why they're called records. Yeah. Because it's like... This is yeah. A rec- this is like a record. It's like an archaeological oh, thing. I just got goosebumps. Yeah, it's, like, it's like an archaeological find. It's like, this is 2019 for mm. me and this is what I made. Yeah. And there'll be like little bits of evidence that it happened. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, that's why I'm addicted to... That's why I love, you know, vinyl. Yeah. That's why I love the physicality of yeah. making something yeah. that's going to be in other people's houses. Yeah, that's important to me as well. Even though... Uh, like I'm not going to get wax for this. I'm getting cassettes, and I doubt any of the cassettes will even get played. But uh, I need to hold this thing in my hand, and yeah. I want to give it to the people that are that want it. Yeah. That I mean, yeah. In a, in a lot of ways, I think that some of the records that I'm going to sell, and mm. it, in fact, I know for a fact a lot of the Specs records um, that we that were bought 
people yeah. are like, I don't, I don't own a record player. Yeah, but, but I'll have this. this yeah. because I want the yeah. artifact. Yeah, of like the seeing artifacts, you guys yeah. play and and liking yeah. your songs, and and the thing and and also the, you know, when you bought a record, you got the the, the downloads or whatever, yeah. and yeah, yeah. So it's 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 really nice. I, I feel like the you know the idea of a release you know has one sense and a record has another it's like mm. you want to talk about masturbatory it's like you're like wank on the ground yeah and then uh, people can find it that's funny <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was like uh, i think about that quite similarly um and this ep is like a real love making but i am dedicating my whole year next year to wanking i'm just doing singles with like producers i want to work with and videos with those tracks and just going bang there's a video single 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 that's my year next year. I'm sure. just gonna go like song, video, song, video, song, video, song, video. Just slut it up. Just get in everyone's fucking beat pocket and just like rap a bunch of different ways. And then, in my dream, you know, in in my version of reality, if it all works well, I'll have developed the skill enough to write an album the year after. Because I don't want to. Like, if I write an album, it's going to be something that you really must listen to from. St- start to finish yeah like that vibe of like good kid mad city or like homebrews self-titled thing um or even like for the term of his natural life by trem that's just like a thing you can just press play on and like it just uh, yeah i don't want to make an album that's just 12 it's just a long ep the idea of an lp is like this thing that i'm not not even ready to touch yet yeah, like two EPs, bunch of singles, and maybe we'll go an album, but I don't sure. know yet. Well, I feel like I don't know. I don't exactly know how long we've been chatting, but oh. it feels like feels like a. Uh, I could talk forever, dude. Yeah, I know. Invite well, me I, back. You know, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll have you back. I was going to suggest, and I didn't even talk. I to honestly, you about this. I've got no idea how long it's been. Yeah, I know. I don't. I, care. <laughs> I, I don't couldn't. Care. I couldn't. I can't see a clock. I don't have any clocks yeah, in here. But um, what I was going to suggest is, do you want to say a poem? Oh yeah. Do you want to say a poem? Yeah, I say sure. I suggest like take it out of the mic stand, and you can you can oh. go up to the camera if oh, you like. Oh yeah, well this is just what you get on my f- um, Instagram, really. But th- I mean, you know, do you, are you even going to credit? You're going to even credit me with higher production values? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, it's better than my max. You got to talk thing. onto the. Hey, I just wrote this actually, um, like two or three days ago. Um, I reckon it's pretty dope. But you can be the judge of that. (laughs) Um, He goes, I'm chasing down the end of a fractal. The weight of the atlas is bending my axles. I send for the satchel of zen and the matches, pretending I'm deaf for a breath in synapsis. I'll swap a sesh for a nang hit. Bang this rap when your friends make you anxious. This is band camp gang shit. Showing off to lad chicks, blowing them a kiss and then choking on semantics. I only stand where my band is. Five pink bits, I'm a hype beast bandit. Candid with a can-do attitude, kid, can it. I'm at the zoo just tanning. Standard, smoking on a zoot with love handles. I love for as long as the flicker of a candle. Dangling the carrot from a psychedelic mantle. I'm the type of guy to bring a bit of chaos to the sample. You'd probably pay us for a tamper. Ladle up the flavour so you play us on a caper. Stating that you're faded is a basic way to say it. I'm erosion on a cliff face from the ocean when it's spraying. And that's actually um, a rap I rapped. But that's it as a poem. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Thanks, for the, thanks for the chat. Kegels. Thanks for having me. You're a fucking legend, brah. Well, people have been watching it. They've, they've oh, well. They're messaging me. That's, that's good to know. I I've, got the ke- I've got the Kegels bump. Yeah. This yeah. is what we need. The Kegels effect. <laughs> See you, good people. This is uh, Pubify Works It Out. You can follow. Uh, where can where can people follow you? Uh, uh, at Not Keggles, um, at We Are The Regime, and Facebook dash The Keggles. And uh, uh, at Who Knows AU? Uh, at Who Knows Oz. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. All the links that are on this feed. Yeah, that's right. I'll put them on. And uh, yeah, this is uh, Pubify Works It Out. And you can find me at It's Pubify and all the places. But who cares, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't care. I was on my phone already.